Let's continue to make our scene look nicer. First of all, I delete this point light we added for demonstration. Our next topic is the specular highlights or the reflection of the light sources on the object's surfaces. Unlike the diffuse lighting, specular cannot be simulated using light maps or complete maps because it's dependent on the current camera position as well. So we have to use real-time light sources to produce the effect. In this scene, it's enough to use a single light placed at the center to have the highlights on the couch and maybe on the glass surfaces. Let's add a simple point light and connect it to the root of the studio model. We tried to find some satisfying position for it. For example, like this. I zero out the bi-distance attenuation of the light to have the effect evenly on every surface. We can see that the highlights appeared on the couch and the glass panels, but at the same time the entire scene has been lit up, thus ruining the original lightings we achieved with the complete maps. We solved this simply by setting up the light to only emanate specular effect. It's very easy to do in axisymmetry. We simply zero out diffuse intensity. We also decrease specular intensity a bit to have the highlights softer. Now we have a decent glimmering on the couch and the glass panels. It's worth mentioning here that we can achieve a local lighting only affecting a single object or group of objects. For example, let's select the back of the couch. If we connect the light source directly to its scene node, then the light only affects the objects that are in the downwards hierarchy of this node, in this case only the back. If we want the effect on a group of objects, then we have to collect the desired objects under an intermediate scene node and connect the light into that node. Now we set aside this. We are good with the global light effect, so I undo back to the previous state. Here and after, we will add various effects to the scene and will often move between the model and the render compound. This walking in and out could be rather tiresome after a while, so I can show you a more convenient navigation method. Using the shift plus number key combination, we can define bookmarks in the flow editor. For example, now we'll mark our render compound as the location number one. We press shift plus one. In the navigate menu, we can see a new item, a bookmark named render general, indicating that this menu item takes us to the render general compound. Now we go over to the model compound and press shift plus two. This location also appears in the menu. From now on, we can easily switch between the two locations either by using the menu or pressing the control plus one, two combinations. Control plus zero takes us to the root compound by default, but it also can be redefined. So from now on, I'll use the control plus one and control plus two to switch between the two important compounds. I want to talk briefly about ambient occlusion. If we plan to apply additional real-time lights, Sometimes we get more pleasing results if we use ambient occlusion as well. One way to produce it is that we generate ambient occlusion maps beside the light maps or complete maps in 3D Studio Max. In the Choose Bake Elements dialog, we can add an ambient occlusion element. Depending on the renderer plugins installed for Max, we can see several different ambient occlusion generator elements here. So we can add one of them, setup size, file type, etc and Max will generate it simultaneously with the complete map. In order to use ambient occlusion maps in Xsymmetry, we have to choose the right type of shaders. Let's see a shader here. Its type is flat, compil, which only supports color and complete map, but we can easily change it to flat, compil, AO, shader which supports ambient occlusion map as well. I don't want to use it now, so let's restore everything. The other way is applying a real-time post-processing effect to produce ambient occlusion. Go over to the render compound by pressing Ctrl plus 1. Here we can find a prepared ambient occlusion model, which is currently turned off. Let's turn it on. We can see that the effect appears on the output. We can adjust its radius scale, gamma, and other properties, so we can set it up according to our taste. Note that it's an expensive effect. It causes a relatively high GPU load and doesn't always give such a refined effect compared to the generated maps. But it has a great advantage. It works with moving objects as well. In this tutorial, I won't use ambient occlusion. I only wanted to briefly demonstrate it. So let's turn it off.